America's biggest business trade show and conference. We want to extend a very special thank you to AT&T Business for supporting small business and being our presenting sponsor. Please be sure to check out our complete webinar schedule and all on-demand recordings from previous webinars on smallbusinessuniversity.online. All of our webinars are free and full of incredible information to help you grow your business. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available within 24 hours on smallbusinessuniversity.online. At this time, we are turning the public chat feature off for the presentation. We will reopen the public chat window closer to the end so that you can post your questions for our presenter to answer during the open Q&A portion. And now, I'm very excited to introduce today's webinar. Please, take it away. All right, I think I think we have everything online. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Alex Mellon. I'm going to pull up the slides for today's presentation. Screen. All right. Perfect. Let me just double check that everything in in here is it working and there we go perfect um, we have some great great information to go through with you guys today um, again my name is Alex Mellon today we're going to be talking about pivoting your marketing to capture the new digital shopper in the wake of unprecedented unprecedented uncertainty uh, and of course uh, we're going to be talking about uh, COVID um, how it impacted uh, businesses uh, how it impacted consumer behaviors and uh, more importantly how businesses could adapt and pivot their operational and marketing strategy to really um, take advantage of uh, the, the new shopping behaviors and be able to su succeed in the ever ever uncertain market uh, before we start, just a, a little bit about myself. So again, my name is Alex Mellon. I'm the co-founder of SmartSites along with my brother, Michael Mellon. Uh, SmartSites is a leading digital marketing agency. Uh, we have grown the company um, huge amounts, doubling in size almost every year since we started the company 10 years ago. Uh, we now have thousands of clients, uh, over 150 full-time employees, six offices worldwide, and we're consistently rated as one of the fastest growing and best performing digital marketing company. Um, being, being not industry specific and really focusing on small business gives us a really unique uh, vantage point of how businesses have been coping with, with what I call the new normal these days. Um, and that's some of the information I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Um, before we jump in, I always like to start with some some top level information to see to see really where where we stand today with with COVID and everything that's going on. Um, interestingly, last time I spoke at the Small Business Expo, we were right over here at the start of the really big in increase. I think it was a month ago, maybe two months ago, um, where everything was really going up dramatically. Um, both in the United States and in the European Union. Um, I'm happy to say that since then levels have started, well, since then levels went up and got worse, but uh, in more recent times, it's, it's started normalizing. Uh, so this data is as of a day ago, and at the bottom, you could see the source. If you go to this website, you could see this data actually in real time. Um, so levels are finally dropping off, but uh, as, as you could see by the data and obviously as, as you guys could see living, living in the United States, um, uh, COVID is still top of mind for everyone and uh, it really has changed uh, the way businesses operate, uh, the way consumers shop, and I think it will continue to change really everything around us uh, for, the, for the foreseeable, for foreseeable future. So again, it's just good to visualize where we are as a country and, and globally in this pandemic. Um, I, I'll, I'll, 
I think optimistically, uh, next time I'm, I'm speaking at a small business expo, I'd like to see the, the numbers all the way back towards the bottom and uh, COVID completely being behind us. But I think uh, realistically, it's still it's still a top of mind issue for, for everyone. Um, another way to look at it is uh, how all the different states are reacting to it. And uh, along with looking at it here on a country level, I think it's important to understand that in the U.S. it's it's uh, it's been very different geographically. Um, I know in the New York City area where, where I'm from and where our business is, uh, we were probably affected uh, earlier than some of the other areas in the U.S. and affected by a greater amount than some of the areas. We had uh, the entire state, New Jersey, New York, uh, closed down for business completely, where some states haven't been closed at all. So along with the, with the national view, it's important to understand that uh, things are very different uh, for different, different states and different regions of the U.S., uh, as it stands right now, again, I have the source in, in the bottom. You could go to this page, and this is updated every day. I pulled this data a day or two ago. This shows how we stand on a state-by-state -state basis. So for businesses, uh, everything you see in blue is mostly open. Uh, obviously, it doesn't mean everything's open. Uh, dining is still very restricted. A lot of indoor sports, indoor activities are still very restricted. Um, but blue is, is the states that are the most open. Um, everything you see that says mixed are, are states that are partially open and a lot of businesses are still very, very restricted. Uh, and of course, you still have a couple of states that are mostly closed and have severe limitations. Um, and on the right, right side, you have the stay at home order. So you still have a, a couple of states that are under advisory and have restrictions and are really recommending that people stay home. And uh, you still have a couple of states under under curfew. So uh, as much as it feels like the vaccine is here and everything's doing better, um, there's still a lot of restrictions and a lot of obstacles for for businesses to dealing with uh, Corona. So with with that with that all aside, um, I'll jump into I'll jump into to some of the data points and uh, where where the consumers have been. Um, I think generally speaking, 2020 was a year unlike any other. Um, I, I think the, the biggest takeaway is that we had to accept change, adapt, and pivot to a new normal. And that that is uh, in every level of, of, of those words, on a personal level, on a business level, uh, on a marketing level of people people's entire family dynamics change kids couldn't go to school uh, people lost their jobs right um, it was the probably the, the biggest uh, the biggest change of, of our, our lifetimes for 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 most people um, so it's just important to to really be cognizant of uh, everything that's happened as, as we move forward. Um, and with that in mind, uh, let's let's think about as I go through these slides, let's think about how the consumer consumer behavior really has changed with with those times and what that means for small businesses, what that means for your business and what that means for your lives. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, focusing on safety. So um, as might be obvious, uh, safety has been top of mind for everyone uh, in the last year and continues to be. Um, this is uh, Google information about searches based on safety. So um, literally one of the most popular search search uh, phrases um, was safe to, uh, meaning people were searching whether it's safe to fly, safe to travel, safe to drink, right? Uh, safe, safe to go outside, so it's safe to, uh, to go for a walk. Um, safety was by far the biggest top of mind um, top of mind thought to go out all of this and, and continues to be. Um, I think as a business, any product you're gonna try to sell a market uh, or any experience you're gonna you're gonna try to, to or service you're gonna promote, uh, you really have to be cognizant of it. For example, if you're if you're a business that, that does haircuts, right? Uh, you gotta be cognizant. People don't know if it's safe to go in and do a haircut. Is it safe to have a haircut done outside? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, th those are the kind of things that are going through people's minds, and you really have to uh, make sure to provide them the the right information, obviously, and and reassure them of it. Uh, for example, my my uh, my daughter goes to swim school, uh, swim class. 
which is indoors and and obviously as as you'd imagine i i wasn't sure if if going to swim is something that's safe i i probably did very similar searches to one suggested here uh, searching is it safe to to go swim um, it turns out that the most of the medical guidance is that uh, the chlorine and other chemicals in the water actually make it fairly safe compared to a lot of other indoor activities. But um, again, it's just something to keep in mind. That's what the consumer's thinking. And as, as they're interacting with everything in their lives now, uh, especially uh, businesses they interact with. Uh, the swim school we go to actually had signs there uh, quoting research saying that it is actually fairly safe. So they understood that safety is top of mind for people and they really want to reinsure the consumers that yes, it's it's safe to be there as long as you wear a mask, obviously Purell and, and whatnot. Um, and this behavior will continue into 2021. I don't think I don't think it's it's going away. Uh, the other big thing that, that changed in 2020, they'll continue into 2021, is uh, people are interesting and searching for new things, uh, new hobbies, new activities, as uh, as consumers are, are staying home more and more. Obviously, they're, they're looking into all these things. And again, these are... Uh, the reason I go through all of this is that these are all opportunities and something uh, you should be thinking of as a, as a business owner of how you could capitalize on this. So uh, people are searching how to learn languages, how to learn music, coding, art, investing. Um, obviously, Robinhood's in the news a lot now as an investment platform, but it's really been driven by the stay at home crowd who are, who are now learning to invest. So that that's the mindset as people are home more and have been limited from activities more. Obviously, things are going to start opening up and there will be more activities. But uh, I think the mindset isn't going away. I think people are looking and researching how to do and learn new things. And that if that's something your business could facilitate for them, I think it's it's a very powerful angle to approach. Um, you just want to approach it in the correct way, understanding that this is what people are, are searching for and want to learn about. Um, so a lot of businesses have not only learned to survive, but actually have thrived. thrived. Um, and, and again, it's all about the mindset, right? If uh, a lot of these struggles everyone's going through now, uh, a lot of obviously if you're a restaurant, you have immense amount of struggles, but uh, it also creates opportunities, right? Um, uh, we have a local uh, local butcher, for example, that's always you wanted to buy meat from him. You would go to the, to, to the local butcher. You would stand in line. You take a ticket. Right. And that's how you would interact. Uh, when COVID hit, he was actually very quick to pivot to start doing local deliveries. And now he's doing national deliveries and he's doing better than he ever did before when he was limited to the local market. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities to thrive. Um, they just have to be cognizant of the struggles of the consumer and try to help them with it. So a couple of examples here, obviously, with uh, with health, people are more concerned about uh, being healthy and staying healthy. Um, in the automotive world itself has been turned upside down. Uh, most states did not even allow auto sales for a couple of months. Uh, people staying at home weren't buying cars, of course. Uh, but they're actually, uh, the, the auto industry is doing fairly well now as um, the auto dealerships and, and the brands have been quick to address the, the anxiety, fi both financial and, and otherwise, from car ownership. And uh, really capitalize on the fact that car ownership in especially metro areas is actually uh, makes it safer for people, right? People who have taken the, the bus or train before are now and, and maybe have never owned a car are now actually considering owning a car for a safety reason. So there's there's definitely a lot of opportunities to, uh, like this slide says, not only to survive, but to actually thrive. Um, so the, what's the opportunity? I think the opportunity is to empower consumers to feel in control, to feel good about their decisions. Uh, of course, you wanna you wanna relieve their anxiety. You wanna reassure them that what they're doing is safe, right, and is a good decision. That's that's number one. Um, aside from that, I think it's very big uh, in in 2020 and 2021 to really uh, support the consumers, uh, give them give them control over the decisions they're making. 
Um, and that, that works in multiple ways. Uh, that could be getting them involved in a new product release or, for example, in the automotive field, give them control over how they want to purchase the car from, from both uh, purchasing it to picking it up to servicing it. Give, give them the flexibility to decide whether it's something they want to do online, they want to do on the phone, they want to do in person. Um, the, the big thing with COVID, especially as we are now vaccinating, is everyone will continue to have very different comfort levels. And giving consumers control is probably the most powerful thing you can do uh, to really empower them and help your business. Some people won't be comfortable going into a dealership for a long time, right? Uh, to allow a consumer to purchase a car online and then deliver it to their house is, is really a huge value add. On the flip side, you're going to have people who, after being locked up for a long time indoors, who really want to go feel the car, drive the car, and you want to be there for that kind of consumer as well. Um, uh, we talked about it a little bit in the in the earlier slides, but uh, the home will continue to be, I think, pivotal for uh, for consumers going forward. Um, I, I think uh, as people have worked from home the majority of 2020 and will probably be working from home the majority of 2021, I think anything home related continues to be very, very important. People are looking to do things in their home that they wouldn't before. Uh, people who have never cooked in their lives are searching how to cook and dining ideas. Uh, hobbies and gaming and doing activities with your family in your house has become really big, especially as travel was uh, restricted. Um, dining completely moved out of the restaurant and into the home for a lot of people. So it, it's important to really, when you're thinking about the, your business, um, and everyone's business is, is obviously different and, and this might not work for everyone, but how can you bring your, your business and your experience into the home? Um, if, you're, if you're a voice teacher who teaches uh, kids how to uh, sing, um, how do you make your experience remote and still provide the same experience, but now bring it into the consumer home? Um, if you're if you're a restaurant that can't have indoor dining, uh, how do you best promote your your dining experience uh, in, into the into the person's home? Um, so that, I, I think the home will continue to be a pivotal part uh, of everything for for 2021. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Even even if you're a business that traditionally wasn't. Uh, wasn't focused on, on something like that. Even the, the example I used before, you're a hairdresser, right? You do haircuts. Is it possible for you to actually go to people's homes and do it from people's homes? Uh, do you even need a retail location right now? Those are the kind of questions that are worth asking. Um, not to say that that I'm th those are the answers I'm giving, but it's certainly worth 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 the thought and adapting your your business to really these these changing behaviors. Um, another very interesting uh, trend that, that's been going on for a while, but really accelerated in 2020, is um, consumers really searching for curated options. And instead of searching for the cheapest item, which was by far the top way to search for items for a very long time, people are now searching the best items. So you could see literally search volume here over the last uh, 16 years, and you could see the spike here in 2020. Um, along with people searching for best everything, right? No longer like if, you, if you're buying a lamp, you're not searching cheap lamp. Even think about your own behavior as you're searching for things online. Are you searching cheap, discounted, cheapest? Uh, no, people are now searching uh, best lamp, best rug. Um, and it's, it's important to, to keep that in mind. So uh, along with searching for the best of something, people are really searching for curated lists. Uh, it's not necessarily always going to be a best lamp. For, uh, people might search uh, for best accessories to work from home, right? Um, so as a, as a, let's say, your, uh, your, uh, your website that sells work from home goods, right? Um, you really want to have a page on there or a blog post or something for this kind of behavior. You really want to create curated lists to help consumers really find out what, they, what they're looking for. Um, with less and less people going into physical stores, um, people really want these curated lists of, of, to help them find things to make their everyday lives easier and better. 
Um, and of course, this goes hand in hand with subscription boxes, which have been popular for a couple of years, but are now an all time high. Obviously, as people are at home, they're they're buying sub subscription boxes for meals, which was always popular. There's a couple of companies that popped up that now do kids meals because kids would go to school and they would have lunch in school. All of a sudden, your kids are, are remote and learning from home. Well, how are you going to come up with a different meal for them three times a day? Um, some of these uh, kids specific meal boxes are a solution. And uh, these are all opportunities to, to both create businesses and pivot your business to serve this changing market. Um, another another way of looking at it is this uh, curate, curating uh, all of our experiences. So um, people people now um, without really traveling and, and seeing things in a store, um, are searching for really um, all these experiences online. So uh, what does that translate to? Everyone wants a virtual tour of everything, right? Um, it, concerts, I think, will eventually reopen, but for the time being, there's actually been a couple of successful concerts that were completely virtual. Uh, there were a couple of concerts that were completely virtual and virtual reality. With a, You have to wear the VR helmet. Um, virtual experiences, I think, will continue to be huge. I think it'll take a while for everyone to be comfortable with doing all of these um, experiences. Otherwise, I think even then people will get used to doing more and more things virtually. So um, I think no matter what kind of business you are, you really should try to integrate a virtual component into your business. Um, even even if you're a restaurant that now can have indoor dining and all you do is take out, maybe it makes sense to do a virtual experience showing uh, showing you prepared meals for people, right? Um, that's, that's really what people are looking for. And if even if they're not directly looking for the local pizza place to do a virtual tour, um, if that's something you put up, I'm sure people will be interested in and, and, and watch it. So um, definitely trends that have really increased in 2020 will continue to increase in, in, in 2021. Um, and then automotive, of course, is is, is a world of its own. Um, uh, people who have never bought cars are now buying cars just because it gives them mobility. They can't rely on buses and subways anymore. Um, uh, people are searching for used cars more than, more than ever, the, the, the young buyers. Um, people are searching for what each car is best for it because the people's daily routines have changed. They're no longer, they might not be using a car to commute to work anymore. They might be remote now. They need a car for different reasons. So um, just very important to be cognizant of of, uh, of all of these changes. Um, I think uh, the, the my, my big takeaway from all of this, and we're, we're almost done. I have one more slide. I purposely left a lot of time for Q&A in the end because I think, I think that the the best way I could help present all this information for you guys is 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 to to help you apply it to your own businesses. So uh, if anyone has questions, uh, we're we're almost there. Make sure to jot them down so so you don't forget them. Um, I think the big takeaway for for 2021 is uh, you really need to be agile and to be cognizant of uh, of consumer behaviors as. Um, I think at least Q1 of 21 will continue to be of what we saw in 2020. Uh, Q2 probably as well as as more and more people are vaccinated and there's there's a slight return to uh, pre-COVID times. I think uh, behavior might change a little bit, but a, a lot of these things will stick. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, even in the auto business, a lot of people who didn't think they would ever own a car will now own a car. And we saw a lot of that in, in China as well right after... Um, Right after the case counts went down in the summer, their rate of car ownership jumped to old time record uh, because people are now seeing that um, it's it's a safer, safer alternative. Uh, who knows when is it going to be completely safe to go on a New York City subway? Right. Um, uh, for those of you who are from New York City or from the surrounding metro areas, uh, when would you personally feel safe? going on a subway let's say let's say without a mask because at that end of the day who knows how much the mask will protects you if you take if it's not on correctly when when as a personally if you think about it when would you feel comfortable going on a on a packed uh, subway train um without wearing a mask it'll probably take a while so i i think the the consumer behaviors 
are going to keep skewing this way. I think they're going to keep skewing towards virtual experiences. Uh, I think they're going to keep uh, centering around your home. And I think most importantly, um, there's going to be a very, very big uh, divide between what consumers are comfortable with. Uh, many will be more comfortable with in-person experiences a lot sooner. Uh, many won't. And of course, you'll have the people in the middle. So uh, the path to success along with pivoting your business to the new behaviors is to be as flexible as possible and really create, uh, create different ways for the consumers to interact with your business. And I will leave you guys with a quote from Peter Drucker. Uh, for those who don't know him, he was a very, very prominent uh, management consultant uh, who who was very important to um, how companies changed and grew um, over the last century. Uh, he passed away, I think, uh, a little over 10 years ago, but um, literally the last 60 or 70 years, he was very prominent in, in helping uh, companies uh, succeed and grow in uh, in his own words and, and obviously he passed away before COVID became a thing uh, but in his own words uh, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence it is that it is to act with yesterday's logic so uh, my interpretation of that is the, is, is what, what I mentioned through the slides is that um, businesses need to be very flexible and very agile and you have to be very quick to adapt to the changing times and adapt to changing consumer behavior and uh, in in which cases I think you won't only survive but there's really opportunities to thrive there's opportunities for new businesses and entire new industries to be created in in the coming years uh, year and coming years as as we really uh, come to terms with all of these covid uh, covid implications and I, I think uh, uh, I don't think it's going away again for, for to try internalize it a little bit I think next time anyone's going to be going on a plane, they'll be a lot more cognizant of washing their hands, keeping a mask on, right? Not 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 eating food with their dirty hands. I think these are the kind of behaviors that that are not just going to go away in three months. I think they're going to stick around with us for a while. And as a business owner, your your uh, what you could do is, uh, of course, adapt to these behaviors and and uh, look for opportunities to to expand and grow your business. And that's it for me. I'm going to open it up to a Q&A. I think uh, that I, I think I may have misspoken. I don't think it's on me to open up to a q and A. I I think uh, the, the small business expo team uh, is going to do that shortly, I hope. All right, chat is open. So guys, if you have questions, put it in the chat. I'll respond to it. Um, um, I, my, my experience with, with, with our clients is really the stuff that I talked about, which is helping businesses adapt to these changing consumer behaviors. So uh, anything for your specific businesses or anything uh, future looking that you guys have questions with, please ask and I'll read off questions and answer them so we have number one from uh let me move the screen a little bit i think my screen sharing is off yeah. um from christina what is your recommendation for businesses that are required by law to be face-to-face -face transactions so that's that's a tough one uh, i guess christina can you clarify what kind of business uh, i know i know there's a lot of businesses um that have traditionally been face-to-face -face that have found ways around it uh the auto world even though i can't say it's required by law but for example uh getting financing on your car is not something people have ever done over the phone or over the internet but now are doing it um i also know a lot of legal services that have traditionally been 
face-to-face private conversations that found ways to do it remotely. Um, so I guess it would depend on the ty- type of business. If you're absolutely no way, no ways out required to do a face-to-face, I think it's going to be tough. Uh, but there, there's got to be a r- ways around it. Even even uh, court systems in a lot of states and jurisdictions have allowed cases to be tried remotely now. So. Um, Firearm dealer, we're required to get all the paperwork and transactions in person so we know exactly who we're selling to. Um, so that's tough. I think a lot of that will deal with local laws and implications. Um, my my suggestion would be to, to uh, even if you're required to do the final transaction in person, that that uh, to move some of the customer interaction to a virtual format. So, for example, uh, you could do and and again, I don't know the the the, the laws around it. It might be a good chat with a lawyer, but uh, for example, you could do a virtual like showroom where where uh, people could see all the all the items uh, virtually, or you could even do like a, a Zoom video conference once a day at a certain hour where you go through the inventory and you show people stuff. So even if the final transaction has to be made in person, you could move a lot of the kind of the touch and feel that people are used to doing in the store to a virtual environment at the end that they only come in to put in the paperwork and actually pick up in person so uh, again a a good chat with the lawyer about what's allowed and what's not but in those kind of industries i would work on moving as much as you can to a virtual environment um evelyn what industries do you see coming successful next um in the last couple of months uh i've seen anything around the home being very successful uh home gyms have been huge right peloton has been a huge phenomenon that was just there at the right time uh but there's every single type of home gym possible that now copied them and is coming out as well right for every kind of form of exercising there's now a home gym scenario Um, food deliveries of any and every kind have become huge wine clubs have become huge Uh, any experience or any product that you could move from a retail to a consumer um, is is uh, is huge and will continue to be anything hobby based or or for families will be big a lot of families would always travel right whether they're traveling on vacation for families or kids have sports and they travel all of that kind of flew out the window and i'm sure the demand for it is very big and will come back but in the meantime i, I think anything centered around the home will will continue to be very important to you as consumers um jennifer are are there any new tools for virtual meetings or virtual experiences that isn't zoom um yeah it's a good question so for us personally uh, at smart sites we work very closely with google and have a very good relationship with google and always had uh, a lot of it on the marketing side um, we build a lot of websites and bring a lot of small businesses into the internet ecosystem which ultimately wind up using google products for ads and and everything else uh so just out of that relationship we've been very google uh focused uh so personally for email we use g suite which is i now i think now called google workplace or workspace um that natively has uh that natively has a video conferencing that has been very very good and reliable for us um having a lot of different clients i've been probably on every single type of video conferencing platform imaginable Uh, but for us the google platform we still like the most and the plan we're on which is not the most expensive plan the, the, the plans will cost you per email so if you have five emails you pay I think our plan is $10 per month per email. Um, the plan comes with a lot of functionality that's very important to us, which includes video recording. So uh, if we have a kickoff with a client, uh, we record the video and then send it to them in case they didn't catch something, for example. Or if we have internal meetings and someone's out sick, everything gets recorded. Uh, it could then re- be repurposed for training and whatnot. Um, and again, it's not like it's it's a no cost feature if you're using G Suite. And the recording, I think you have to be using maybe one plan higher, but still, I think I think the cost is something like ten dollars per month. So that's that's for us has been uh, the the most easy to use and the most reliable. Uh, Evelyn Wine Club, yeah. So wine, wine clubs have been big. So uh, as you could imagine, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of wineries themselves have always sold directly to the liquor stores. Now saw this huge opportunity, and there's a lot and lot of wineries that have gone into um, 
uh, into the digital space as as a monthly delivery service. Uh, there, it, there's always there's also been a lot of opportunities for really niche plays. Uh, so, for example, I. I'm not going to promote uh, uh, any specific companies here to, to to keep it fair, but for example, there's a company that does uh, sugar-free wine. Um, so, uh, as part of uh, as part of this whole Corona thing, a lot more people are at home and worried about their health. So, diets have been big, and not necessarily like lose weight diet, more like stay healthy diets. So, keto obviously is I think all time highest search volume for keto. Uh, for keto, you can't have sugar. So, this wine company uh, is selling sugar free wine, and they don't even produce it themselves. They literally just reach out to wineries and find wineries who are willing to remove sugar from their wines and they've been really really successful so uh, that that one is a good combination of both ship to your home service combined with people being more cognizant of uh, of uh, wanting to be wanting to be healthy cool any any other questions questions about specific business lines about industries All right, if there's no other questions, I'm going to put in my info here really quick. So if anyone's interested to, here, I'll, I'll type it up. Anyone is interested in connecting, all of my social media info is here. Oh, maybe, maybe if I do it like this, you'll actually get the link. Um, and f if for any website, marketing, services reach out smartsites.com um yeah so definitely uh, anyone interested in any of this stuff uh, all of my information is alexmelon.com if you go to that website on the bottom i have all my social media so feel free to connect i'm, I'm usually very active on on probably linkedin and twitter the most but really all social media platforms i'm always sharing all my thoughts on there so definitely feel free to connect and follow and if anyone has any other uh questions definitely feel free to uh, follow up. I'll also have to go in my email address and our phone number. Email is alex at smartsites.com. And uh, you could always reach SmartSites at 201 870 6000. And I think that wraps it up. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. <laughs>